What is going on Auto Cravers? How's it going? If you're new to the channel, my name's Awesome and this is my car channel, Auto Crave. Both the Toyota Supra and the BMW M2 are great cars, don't get me wrong. But in this video, we're gonna see which one does better in terms of performance, exterior design, and interior design. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, tap that notification bell to stay updated with the videos, like and comment down below if you want. And if you're new to the channel, welcome to the Auto Crave family. Make sure to watch the whole video since I will be announcing another category that will be included in the performance category. Let's start off with the BMW M2, shall we? So we got a 3 liter inline 6 cylinder engine which allows the M2 to sprint from 0 to 60 in around 4 seconds for the manual transmission M2 competition, around 4.2 seconds for the automatic and around 3.8 to 4 seconds for the M2 CS. Now the M2 competition is the essentially base model M2, but the M2 CS is the top of the line M2. Now for the horsepower and torque numbers for the BMW M2, we got 4 and 5 horsepower for both M2 competition models, no matter if you get the manual or the automatic, and 450 horsepower for the M2 CS. Now for pound feet of torque, 406 pound feet of torque for the manual and the automatic M2 competition models and 406 pound feet of torque for the M2 CS. Top speed for the M2 competition and for the CS are going to be the same, being 156 miles per hour limited electronically or 174 miles per hour not limited electronically. And those are pretty fast, not saying anyone wants a speed, but I'm going to give the M2 a 3 out of 3 for top speed. Alright, so for those who have watched until this part of the video, thank you. And the announcement is that I will be adding an exhaust note or sound category within the performance category so you guys can listen to those excellent exhaust notes. The sound clips I found for the M2 unfortunately were not for the stock M2 but were for the FI exhaust system. So even with the FI exhaust system it sounds really cool and I'm sure with the stock exhaust system that would still be cool and that would deserve a 3 out of 3 in my book. For the weight of the BMW M2, now this is where the M2 lacks and the weight of the M2 competition with the manual is 3,655 pounds, 3,600 pounds for the M2 competition with an automatic transmission and 3,417 pounds for the M2 CS which is okay for a sports car but is not, uh, is not completely as light as you would expect. Information for the Nurburgring lap times are found for both cars and I was not very sure of the transmission for the BMW M2 competition going around the track but that was 7 minutes and 52 seconds for the BMW M2 competition and for the BMW M2 CS in an also impressive time of 7 minutes and 42.99 seconds and that was with the double clutch transmission. Given the fact that the BMW M2 is a performance machine, the M2 scored a 3 out of 3 in all the categories except for the weight and for weight, it got a 2 out of 3. In that case, the BMW M2 scores 23 out of 24 points for performance. Excellent job, BMW. All right, so now we're on the Toyota Supra. And so the engines available for the Supra are either a 2-liter inline 4-cylinder engine or a 3-liter inline 6-cylinder engine. Even though you might say that the 2-liter 4-cylinder engine is not the engine for enthusiasts when buying a Supra, these are some great combinations of engines for any type of buyer. So I'm going to give the engines for the Supra a 3 out of 3. For the 0 to 6 time for the Toyota Supra, we got 5 seconds for the 4 cylinder engine and 3.9 seconds for both the 3 liter inline 6 engines, either if you get the non-premium or the premium model. I'm going to give the Toyota Supra a 3 out of 3 for 0 to 60 times, since even though the 4 cylinder Supra does 0 to 60 in 5 seconds, that still is okay for anyone that just wants to get into a Supra, and especially 3.9 seconds for the, the 3 liter inline 6 models is very impressive, so a 3 out of 3 for sure. The Supra's torque numbers are 255 horsepower for the 2 liter inline 4 cylinder engine, 382 horsepower for the 3 liter non-premium model, and the same for the premium 3 liter top of the line model. The torque for the Supra is going to be 295 pound-feet of torque for the 4 cylinder model, and 368 pound-feet of torque for both the 3 liter cylinder base model and the 3 liter premium model. and those numbers are really impressive, so I'm going to give the Supra a 3 out of 3 for torque. Top speed time. So the top speed for all the Supra models is going to be 155 miles per hour, which is really fast. 
Not saying you want to speed, but I'm going to give the Toyota Supra a 3 out of 3. For the sound clip for the Supra, I could not find a stock Toyota Supra sound clip. So here's one with an FI exhaust. Not bad, was it? So imagine if this was a stock Supra, this would still even sound nice. So I'd give the Supra a 3 out of 3 for the sound. Now the weight of the Supra is going to be 3,181 pounds for the 4 cylinder engine and 3,400 pounds for both 3 liter inline 6 cylinder engines. And that is actually not that heavy. That's somewhat light in fact. And that's going to be a 3 out of 3 for the Supra for the weight. The Supra's Nürburgring time of 7 minutes and 52.17 seconds is not bad. And that gives the Supra a 3 out of 3 for Nürburgring times. Even though you might call the Supra a Toyota, it definitely deserves a 24 out of 24 for performance and a 3 out of 3 for engine 0 to 60 times, etc. And great job, BMW and Toyota. The M2's aggressive and compact look are going to give the M2 a 1 out of 1 for being stylish, since that's what the majority of the buyers of the M2 are going to be looking for. The M2 is going to get a 1 out of 1 for being unique, since what other car has that unique appeal of an M2? And the design is definitely worth the price even though BMWs are mostly known for being overpriced, but the demand for M2s in terms of design and performance are excellent. So a three out of three for the exterior design of the M2. The Supra's design could be controversial, but the Supra is definitely stylish and the designers really hit it out of the park with that. It is really unique and what other car has the shape of a Supra, right? And so for stylish, the Supra is definitely a one out of one unique one out of one and the Supra definitely deserves that price tag for how, how exotic the, it actually looks. So for exterior design, the Supra definitely gets a three out of three. The interior design for the M2 is actually not as bad as you may think. And let me tell you why. For the ergonomics, the ergonomics or the controls in the M2 are easy to use and are driver focused, giving the M2 a one out of one for ergonomics or how well the controls are to use. For the price, I'm gonna give the M2 a 0 0.5 out of one since the build quality is not as bad, but the materials are not as premium or high quality as competitors. And for tech, the tech in the M2 is actually not that bad. And that gives M2 a one out of one for a performance car. And that in total gives M2 a 2.5 out of three for interior design. The Supra's interior design is not cheaped out either. The interior is really worth the price since the interior is wrapped in leather and it just looks really expensive. So that would give the Supra a one out of one for the interior being worth the price. For the ergonomics, all the controls are easily reachable by the driver like the iDrive system from BMW, which gives the Supra a one out of one for ergonomics. For tech, the Supra has the BMW infotainment system or the iDrive infotainment system, which is great unsurprisingly. And that gives the Supra a one out of one for tech. The M2 and the Supra are excellent performance cars, but the Supra does better for weight and the interior design. So for this competition, the Supra does win. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me comparing the Toyota Supra versus the BMW M2 for performance, exterior design, and interior design. I'll be leaving an I button or information button either to the top left side of the screen or to the top right side of the screen so you guys can see some of the content that was made like the Corvette C8 versus Porsche 911 comparison video for performance, exterior design, interior design, etc. And make sure you subscribe, tap that notification bell to stay up to date with the latest and the greatest auto creative content. Like and comment down below if you want. And see you next video. Peace.